welcome back to Country Catholics. We are going to try to do like maybe weekly updates of farm life, sheer life, everything. Um, so anyways, we thought we would give you kind of an update. This video will be like since we moved in, so September of 2022 to now, which is basically March of 2024. So a year and a half of moving here. So what do you want to share, honey? <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> I already have I a, my nose is itching. I don't feel like I don't want to be picking my nose on the video. <laughs> we'll edit that out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and we're hoping not to edit this. It's just going to be what it is. So. I don't have much of a memory. I'm just thinking this past week we, we did have three. Let's go back. I feel like we should back. go back. Like, and we moved. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so September we moved in and it was crazy. And within that first month we found out that we knew our foundation was bad. This is a 1960s house. We knew the foundation was bad. That was all gonna have to be redone. Um, and then we found out the water main line to the house, so from the meter to the house, that was busted, um, which is part of the reason that there was issues with the foundation because that was just freezing and you know constricting and expanding year after year, basically pushing on that foundation wall. Um, and then what else did we find out? Then, then the air, so September, so our air conditioner wouldn't, wouldn't cool the house down. So that was toast. It was original, which, you know, we kind of suspected, um, would happen soon. And then the heater, the heater was leaking carbon monoxide. So within really like two weeks of moving in, uh, we had some, we had some busy hits. So that kept us busy. Then October, what all happened? We were doing fencing. We had some goats already. We had Daisy already. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. We did have, let's see. So that was like was October. September, so then October, November. November. Uh, I think just, I just think of like a deer hunt when I think of November. That's right. Rocky see, shot I would never first. have, I would never have included that. Yeah. Rocky <laughs> shot his first deer on the property. Not sure. That was exciting. That was good. That was good. That yeah, was November. I remember that. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, what all? Then to December, they were they had redone two of the walls of the three that they were going to do on the foundation, and we're getting close to Christmas, and um, it was super super cold. They'd had everything dug out. Anyways, our pipes ended up busting. So when it's winter and everybody says, oh, the temperatures are so, so, so cold, like zero degrees consistently, um, you know, your pipes, if you, you know, if you have water in there, they will just burst because they'll expand so much. And so tips on that is to run your water faucet just at a trickle so if there's a movement of water that helps prevent the pipes from busting. Even in the kitchen, they say to open your kitchen cabinet doors at night so that the heat from your house will help to keep that temperature up but um anyways ours busted so we had water going in the basement mm -hmm. we had that a couple times we had water from rains water in the basement that was fun at this point i think we we're still in two storage units and stuff here we have like 1300 square feet we were living in family of eight you know one bathroom that at which time didn't even have a shower has a handheld, we're doing the handheld thing. Uh, so baths was it, and then the tiles. It's kind of a, not as bad of a situation for the boys and I. <laughs> it was horrible. Like I really don't know how I even made it through it. I don't know how we made it through any of that. Uh -huh. um, finally, by the time we were getting, yeah. So anyway, so May, I remember, or March, ugh, December, I know, the pipes burst, it was like three days before Christmas. And of course the guys were coming on that Monday. So it, if it had just been two more days, like it would have been okay. But anyway, so we got that fixed and we got that foundation wall fixed. Um, then we redid our bathroom. We did have to quickly replace the hot water heater because the hot water heater was not keeping up. And we did go with a tankless and we've loved it. Um, I really love it, so. 
Uh, do you know what brand we went with? Mm -hmm. Do you remember? I don't remember, but it it's, yeah. Um, We'll try to put that in the description box. And we're going to leave this video open for comments. I know some people wanted to put comments on all of our videos, but then you have to make it like adult. It's not a kid video. And I wanted to make our videos kid friendly, but um, still trying to figure out all of YouTube's algorithms and situations. So um, I think it was funny because when we are, when we replaced the hot water heater, we went from our current at that time hot water heater might produce a half a tub of hot water at best. Uh, and we went from that with a family of eight to endless hot water. Yeah. It was yeah. such a change. Like it was, insane. it was like almost everybody should just take long baths just to celebrate. <laughs> but now we do have to like cut kids off because like yeah they could be in there forever if they wanted to that is the negative of why some people really won't put in a hot water heater a tankless one because especially with girls because then they are like they just stay in the shower forever because the heat water never goes cold um so we were at that time running to the ymca i think i went up to my friend christina's i went up to her house a couple times and showered there we go to the y and we basically exercise and shower at the y and come home because the kids got a kick because I wouldn't take show. I wouldn't take soap to the Y, and they asked me what I was doing. I told them, "Well, there's a there's a there's a pump in the shower." This is for... the stuff that I'm like, why am I putting this on YouTube? Like, this is the stuff that my husband soap, does. So he's um, using the handheld soap for like. Shampoo. It said body on the pump, so I wanted to clarify that with the kids. They still thought that was yeah a little much, but yeah. So Anyways. we're good. Um, anyway, so that was December. We finally, so yeah, it was like December, January when we finally got the bathroom remodeled, right? Yeah. And that was our big push because that, um, it was literally, this is why we call our farm Green Acres. Because if anybody has seen the TV show from what was that, like the 40s, 50s? Oh, after that even. Okay. Anyways, it was a super funny a sitcom um, and if it's you can buy the DVD sets we have bought it it's hilarious but basically they have a their bedroom wall in their bedroom it just falls in it's like this farm family or this family from New York City it's not even a family it's a couple they're married from New York City they moved to the small you know small town farm living and they're super excited about it kind of like us and uh, anyways it's way worse than they thought and the house is horrible and um anyway so their living room or their bedroom wall just falls down all the time like it just and so people just come into their house into their bedroom <laughs> and that's kind of how our bedroom was we didn't have doors on our bedroom um until the bathroom could get remodeled because the previous owners had some had a child that was handicapped so they just put an entry to that bathroom from the bedroom so anyway so it was wonderful when we finally got hot water shower in our bathroom, which is a good size. Um, so, but, so we're all still using that. Year and a half in, family of eight. Two sinks though. Um, so anyway. But actually that hasn't been that bad. No. Surprisingly. I know. I know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty shocked Amanda too. Did, she did some ship lap and picked out some nice tile. It, I'll put it some came video. out really I'll put nice. Some pictures in. I love it. I love it. I love it a lot. Um, so then what else? So then what all happened? Oh, then February, early February, we had baby goats born. We were on, that was unexpected. The previous uh, breeder that we bought the goats from thought they might be bred. They were. So actually it was kind of, it was really sad because Kelly went out to do chores that morning and we didn't know. And um, we kind of suspected Clementine might be having babies, but not Mary. And um, anyways, she had had them in the night and we weren't there and it was really cool. So um, that was just super sad. But so with that warning, then we got right on the ball and got everything really ready for Clementine and had our monitors and our heat lamps and everything ready to go. And she had her babies within 12 hours. So she had them that night, mm -hmm. um, like around 930 that mm -hmm. night. So yeah, within 12 hours of, from that morning to that night, then we had triplets. So that was really fun to have baby goats on the farm. And we have Blaze, they're born around the feast day of St. Blaze. Uh, I believe it was February 3rd they were born. I think that's his feast day, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, Blaze, and then we had Ginger, and we, Stella, mm -hmm. Stella. 
so yeah, so then we had goats, baby goats. So we started milking Mary right away because even though she'd lost her babies, we wanted to start milking her. So we started milking her and, um, and then we were milking Clementine too after a little while, but um, Ginger didn't really take to nursing very well. So we started bottle feeding her. And I think that was good too, because we had colostrum on hand. And so we were able to make her the bottles right away. Um, and I and kept her alive, I think. So um, anyway, so that was great. So Ginger is our friendliest goat. She loves us, any bottle fed animal really, but especially goats, they are always gonna associate you with food. So they love to be around you. And um, so that was hard bottle feeding in the middle of the night, like you have a newborn baby again, but um, it was worth it. She's she's awesome. And so we love, I love Mary's milk. It's super rich and creamy and um, I'll never forget when your mom came over and she had the taste test in front of like a few people and she's like, oh my gosh, this is so good. Um, Cause most people just think, I feel like the grocery store goat milk is just horrendous. And so I wouldn't get that, but um, Mary's milk was super good. Now Clementine's, sometimes she has a little bit of a goatee flair to hers, which we can't, we don't know why, cause they get the same food. Everything's the same for the goats, but hers wasn't always as good but um and i did have people that wanted to buy it so i did sell some goat milk um but pretty much we drink what they make Deer, um, nigerian dwarfs um, don't make a ton of milk and so now our kids don't necessarily think they like goat milk you're kind of on the fence too well, aren't you? i really don't drink milk at all well that's true yeah yeah but i um but like i have an allergy to dairy to milk um from cows but goats is not, it doesn't pull up on my like food allergies. So they are different, dairy from cows and dairy from goats. And it's not to say you might be allergic to both, but um, they are different. But he doesn't do any cow's milk or even, I guess, goat. Right, no milk. Yeah. And sometimes Kelly might have his eyes closed, but that's just because he's like, he's in so much pain, which we hope to get into the disability stuff at some point, but He's in so much pain that a lot of times he's like, I, I, he can't really think. So he has to kind of close his eyes. So he's not falling asleep. I'm not us. falling asleep. That's yeah. right. Well, maybe sometimes, but not right now. Actually, I'm feeling, I'm not, I'm not tired right now. <laughs> so, um, gosh, what else? Okay. So that was like February goats, just learning all that, keeping the bucks separated from the does and with goats or herd animals, you always have to have two together. So making sure all that works. Um, kid goats do get disbudded right away, like definitely under three weeks. Um, some people do it the first week they're born. Um, disbudding is kind of what we would recommend. It's, it's the burning on their horns. Um, so you kind of burn them off um, it kind of protects them from getting tangled up in fences, which does happen. We do have a goat that um, his disbudding didn't take and he has wonky horns and he does, it, it, he gets into trouble and it's not good for them. So um, so we usually have them disbudded. I found somebody in our town that would disbud them for us and he's done it kind of as a 4-H project to help us out so far. But um, anyways, what else happened? by like March, April. March, April was really hard because we were realizing by then that Kelly's condition was getting worse since we moved. It got a lot worse and by April, his birthday's in April and um, that was just very hard because we decided, we knew he really is gonna have to, maybe you wanna speak more to this, but. Well, I think that if you ever have a chronic illness Sorry, it's hard to talk about it, but there's a grief, there's a grief period. So we really have been but, going um, through that, yeah, like yeah. with moving, cause you know, there was this hope of like, oh, farm life, even though it's hard, it is like where guys feel like they're men, you know, like, and you're just being in the nature and stuff. So we did have a hope that it would make, you know, Kelly would get better and um, he had been doing okay, but we think really just the stress of the stress of moving, the stress of all the house and living in the construction and then the animals and just moving, even things about moving in a, to another state, you don't think about like just your doctors and, and 
we're not like huge on doctors and but sometimes you need them and sometimes you need to you know you need to have somebody to go to and just to, not having that network we underestimated um, the difficulty of that from the first six months so the grieving process of then his leg is not getting better um, as we say that I'm like you need to stretch your leg out but so when we started applying for disability um, for full-time disability because it was evident that he wasn't going to be able to like work consistently every day like some days would be okay and he could put in a few hours of work but not every day and you never know really until that day so um so that was very hard that uh, applying for that um praise god we did get approved um our first time which is rare they say usually you get denied two or two or three times before you're approved um we had some horrendous doctors, um, very horrible, but then we also had some amazing ones. Um, like I would say, Dr. Ronnie was so great. She wrote us, I think she probably wrote, she wrote a personal letter and I think that probably really helped Kelly. Um, and then we had doctors that they wouldn't even write anything cause they just thought he's faking it and you know, they've never seen this before and um, you know anyways so that was horrible <laughs> but come may i don't know you feel like things it was also very hard homeschooling through all of that because we homeschool and just different all of that just was like it was just insane so yeah by may i was ready to have a break from teaching and just focus on the farm and stuff so yeah, I'm trying to think what next project we worked on, but this whole time with knowing the foundation needed to be redone, um, they were they said that based on how you would do your foundation, you have to know where you're going to put your addition and where you're going to put your garage and all those things. So quickly there, I also had to start working with like a drafter, um, which luckily I knew someone. They live close by, but they could kind of help us draft the new plan of what the new the house was going to be like where we had anticipated just living in it for quite a while, but with having to get the new air conditioning and the heating and the foundation done right away, we had to know these answers quickly. So um, anyway, so with all that, I don't know, I'm trying to think. We've just done- The next done... thing would have been the concrete. This, that was during the summer. Yeah, that, we... that was more like July. But yeah, so we ended up getting, yeah. A friend of ours, he, um, we actually had like an old fashioned work day and we had a bunch of people that came over and helped us like try to get fences mended and get things all worked out. And so we had like, I don't know, 25, 30 people, including kids come over and um, we all just worked on the farm. And this one guy came and brought his bobcat and like literally started just working and moving dirt and doing this. And I'm like, you're amazing. You're doing this all the kindness of your heart. We were, we we're definitely gonna hire you. And he does concrete work and he, now he's like the best in the area, I had no idea. He does stamped concrete and so I have a really cool barn stamp on all of our sidewalk. We do, we did a breezeway going around the house. And um, anyways, it looks really awesome. And um, so, and then we have a new garage. We went ahead and poured the concrete for the driveway, which, oh yeah, cause that whole time, that whole winter when it's so cold, we had no gravel, we had no, like garage so we were just parking and the kids would have to like put their church shoes in their hands and walk with their mud boots to the vehicle and then get in and change your shoes to go to church i mean it's been gosh where we've like come from is crazy um but i don't know other stuff we've done like we've taken out the main wall of the house and the support wall and open it up we move the staircase over we put in a bedroom downstairs and that's rocky's been rocky's room now in a closet and the living room those are pretty much done so fast forward to now or i guess over the summer i don't know what else did we do over the summer the kids did some camps we went to steubenville we love going taking the kids to the steubenville conference gracie and i went saw father mike schmitz so that was 20, the, 23. That was awesome. Oh, fair. 4-H County Fair was really we dominated great. the dairy goat division. 
because we're the only ones that show <laughs> dairy goats. It was fun it. winning every show. We in that have category. grand champion, reserve, reserve team, grand yeah. champion, it was, yeah. grand champion buck. Grand we champion have a, We actually had to make a room just to hold all of our trophies. Trophies. Yeah. That was cute. Yeah. But, yeah. No, it was fun though. It's good. The kids loved it. I think it was finally, they, they had met enough people that then it was like, we can just go and hang out and they could be free to run around and play with everybody. And it was so good. And the county fair conveniently is like two miles down the gravel road from where we live. So again, super convenient. We took 18 animals to the county fair. It has to be some kind of a record. Um, we took a bunny, mini Rex bunny. We took goats, we took chickens. Dogs. Dogs. We showed two dogs, which Duke did win the Obedience Award. Um, Great Pyrenees can have a reputation for not always obeying, but he did very good, and he is he is a good dog. So um, Daisy's just, she's just really pretty. Daisy's really pretty, but she didn't win the Obedience. Um, anyways, yeah, what else? I'm trying to think. I don't know, but... We celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. That's right. We, we went on a short little getaway to Excelsior Springs and stayed at uh, the Elms. In, inside in Kansas City, like at suburb of Kansas City. Which we would highly recommend. It was really good. We had a good stay. They have a little place called the Grotto where you can get massages and Spa hot tub treatment. And sauna. And it, was, it was really good. We yep. really enjoyed it. We did, and as God always provides, we ran into another couple that is in our diocese, and he's thinking about joining the church, and so, and he had the same church background kind of as Kelly, coming from like the reorganized Latter-day Saints uh, Mormon church, and so, anyways, we just had a lot of things in common with them, and um, he's in counseling, and Kelly's thought about going into that, um, so anyways, it was really nice to meet another couple and um, get away for a little bit. So that was great. Thanks to Gracie. She always takes good care of the kids when we're away and is happy to help to do that. Um, so, but yeah, so then our anniversary is in August. So then started a new school year this year. I'm completely rogue. We're not with anybody accredited. Um, we have done Mother Divine Grace accredited. That's what we did that first year. And it, it didn't really work for me. The, I didn't have a great consultant the first semester. And then anyways, it just, I like a lot of things about Mother Divine Grace and I use a lot of their stuff. Um, we've done Seton before, we've done Seton accredited. I use, still use a lot of Seton's books. Um, we were part of Regina Chaley Academy for three years when we were in Omaha and um, love that. And so um, anyways, but now we're just, we're more secluded. There's not a lot of homeschoolers around us and certainly not Catholic homeschoolers. So we, um, so we kind of just do our own thing and I've done it long enough now that I feel like I can just pull stuff together of what they need. Um, our oldest is a sophomore in high school and we started homeschooling her like the end of her first grade year. So however long that is, I don't think I'm at 10 years, but I'm a tenured school teacher as they say in the public school. I used to be a public school teacher, used to have elementary and early childhood degrees, which I actually think it makes it worse. It makes it harder to teach as a homeschool mom, but that's a whole nother YouTube channel or YouTube video. Video, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anyways, where are we at? So bringing you up to speed this fall. I don't even know. I, what all have we had? Oh, we had puppies born in November. So that was super awesome. Um, wasn't really planning to breed yet, but um, couldn't keep Duke away and sold all of our puppies and they are all so, so cute. And I've loved keeping up with all the people that have bought them. That's been great. Um, we also, the week after that, or the week, I think the week after that, we had another litter of goats. So we had triplets, um, which sadly one of those did not make it. Um, we don't really know exactly why, but... Um, Anyways, but we sold those babies and already and the ones that did make it and yeah, what else? Yeah. Then, uh, that almost gets us to the new year. I know, yeah. So now we have new baby goats this week. We have Cinnamon who's had some baby goats. So those are not sold yet. So if anybody wants to get some, these are not registered, but they are Nigerian dwarf goats. 
Um, the dad was registered and the mom of the mom was registered, but um, if you have even one non-registered in there, parent, you can't register them. So um, they're really cute and I think I'm going to keep the doe because she is so pretty and I want to breed her again. But then we have two bucks, so we're not sure what we're going to do with them. So they're just a few days old now, but they're all healthy and all nursing and doing great. We have yet to try her milk, but her udder is big. I'm excited to try that. Um, <clears throat> this week we've been remodeling the kid, the two upstairs kid bedrooms. They're gonna come tomorrow and sand the hardwood floors that were original to the house and stain them, poly them. They've the rooms have been painted, so we're gonna getting ready to cross that one off soon. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of about it. So thank you for watching. We just wanted to kind of give people an update. It, it won't be this long in the future, hopefully way more fun and entertaining. But we just wanted to kind of put out there to everybody a little bit of an update. Um, we are in like North Central Missouri. Um, I think one thing interesting about all of this is that, it, well, it's not been what, we've, we, what we really expected it to be. And, but it, that's okay. Um, we've learned a lot probably would do some things different but you can't go back but we definitely um we have persevered through some really hard times and trials and um i started listening to lord of the rings on my phone and there's a part where like this the the grand wizard i forget his name now tells ask asks Bilbo, Bilbo to go on this Lord of the Rings adventure with him. And, but he tells Bilbo this, if you go, you will not be the same when you come back. And that's how I kind of feel like mm -hmm. with us is that, you know, we're really, we're really not the same anymore, which that's, you know, I, I've seen those hats because of COVID that says like, you know, um, Normal isn't coming back, but Jesus is. Have you mm, seen those hats? No. I've seen them in, in like, really, yeah, our old life, me and Amanda's old life, which has changed just dramatically. If you knew us, even we used to own nursing homes and just our life has changed uh, so much in the last three years, um, maybe four years even, but it's changed so much that we're really not the same, but it's a good, It's it's been, I don't, I've learned so much mm -hmm. throughout all of this that, um, I'm, yeah, I'm not the same, which is, it's, um, but I'm still Kelly though. But, mm -hmm. uh, I think the biggest thing for us is just trusting in God's divine providence because so many times it has been very, very hard. And especially we really didn't have any mentors, like anybody really helping us either. Um, we've asked them, <laughs> there was people that, but you could tell they just didn't have time or whatever. And, so, but it's been so hard that many times we're like, why did you bring us here, God? But our discernment was clear it, as a family. Everyone discerned and everybody was on the same page. With, if you know anything about discernment of spirits, and then you know that's a sign of the Holy Spirit that everybody was on the same page. And, and all things worked out for this to, to happen. So we know we were called to do this. We know this is where we're supposed to be. But just surrendering to that that's God's divine will. Because if, if it wasn't his plan, he easily could have made it not happen. Um, but he did let it happen. And we are here. And so surrendering to this is where he wants us. Um, why, we don't always know. Um, and we may never know. But I know me and Amanda have said many times, like, isn't it funny? Like something with the house that was wrong. Like we didn't notice that when we bought it. It was kind of a major thing. You know, we probably should have, we should have been more attuned to it. But you know, there was a reason that God didn't allow us to see those problems initially so that we we would still invest in this property. And it has been an investment. Oh. <laughs> but um, we're, yeah, like Amanda was saying, um, we don't really, we did discern it and it was, we are all on the same page. And I, um, yeah, and, and, I, and I, 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 I like that I've learned to, and Amanda too, we've, had to persevere, persevere and really surrender a lot of our former life. We've, if you know my wife, she's very like, um, structure oriented, I would say, or like, you know, like 
black and white. I think the choleric term is a, is a term, but something like that maybe, but just, but she's really surrendered a lot. I've seen her grow to just allow certain things, you know? So if I know, I know it. she's been stretched and if she's been stretched to, to just let go of so much, I know that I've, I've had to, too. I've, I've definitely had to let go of really what I think my next year might look like even. So it's, it's, uh, but, yeah. um, I know I'm, I'm, tr I'm doing, I am doing better. I know I'm kind of getting a little emotional, but I am doing better. And I do, um, I'm accepting of all of this a lot better. I've, su I've surrendered. I've given, I've given it up. No, well, you, you, I, what else can you yeah, do? Yeah, I know. I guess at some point surrender. you gotta just say, I, I trust, even though this is not the way I would do it. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that Jesus has a, a very, a much better plan than I could create. So I have sure. to, I have to allow that to happen and be patient while it happens. So. Yep. He's all good. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. So he can do whatever he wants. And this is what he's done with us. So anyways, we're just excited to share more of our life with you guys. And, um, we know we have people from far away that miss us. So, um, Anyways, like I said, it won't be this long in the future and we're not really going to edit stuff. Our videos, we really do want them to always be kind of raw because A, I don't got time to edit and B, um, it's just real life. So like right now we actually have a babysitter. That's why this is happening with no interruptions, but um, next time I'm sure there'll be someone. So anyways, take care. God bless you. Um, go to countrycatholics.com if you want to get on our email list. That way you'll always get an email as soon as a video comes up. Um, it's new in case YouTube doesn't um, put it at the top of your, you know, algorithm uh, on your feed. And um, so far, that's kind of the only place we really are. I don't know if we'll expand. This is, we're baby stepping this. So anyways, God bless you. Peace.